Hey folks, welcome to my first painting video. Today I'll be showing you how to do a few different weathering techniques on a Gundam ground type model. This is a kit from the Anime 8th Mobile Suit Team. And I'll show you how to go from this to this. I did a little bit of pre-painting on this already, on some of the different pieces that were not separate colors in the original kit. We'll be using minimal stickers on this. I painted the joints up with a mixture of lead belcher and black, as well as painted up a little bit of chrome under the ankle pistons. And I did a little bit of weathering already with some nuln oil just kind of splattered around. So let's get started. And just dip the tip in there. Take off a little bit of the paint. And just give a little flick. And I'm trying to flick mostly from the bottom up. I'm trying to make it look like the lower parts of the model are a little dirtier than the higher parts. I come in on the backpack here and do the same thing, especially along the bottom edges. Not too much. Don't want to overdo it. sure we get the shield too. I'm going to come in around the feet and just really mash on some more. It look muddy. I've prepared this with a little bit of scoring with a file. I'll try to scratch up the heels especially. Let's get a little bit on the heels and ankles too. Just kind of poking it with the front of the brush. I don't want brush strokes, I want splatter kind of patterns. Now the next step is going to be to try to clean off some of this that I just sprayed on. I like how it looks mostly, but I think it's just a little heavy. And my thought is that in the recesses, some of that's going to stick around a little more. But on the exposed parts, it's going to be coming off. I'm going to go in with a couple different passes of different colors. Try to get a variety of splatters. Next, we're going to be using some Lithonian camo shade. This is just a nice dark green wash color. And I'm using the same old brush. Get most of it off. And then and spritz some back on. Now that doesn't show up too much from far away, but up close there's a really nice, just subtle look to it. And let's also just put a little bit more shadow on that groove on the back here too. Just for a little more contrast. It's a real subtle thing, but I think it will add a lot to the overall impact of the piece. If you get too much on there, you can just bring your brush back and pull some back off again. And let's put just a little bit in the grooves on top of here. I don't want a hard edge, so I'm going to take a Q-tip and just kind of feather that back a little bit. And we'll hit up a couple areas on the weapon. I previously tried doing this with the Gundam markers, 
which did a little bit, but it's just a bit more subtle than I wanted it to be. But this one, you can definitely see the shine from that marker, and I do not care for that. So hopefully, a little bit of this null oil kind of knocks that shine down too. Next thing I'm going to do is hit the shield with the rotary tool a little bit. Like this thing has actually been used in combat trying to block incoming fire. Alright. Now really, if it had occurred to me at the time, I should have done that before some of these washes, because that would have helped pick up the color. And now I'm just going to do a couple more little scoring lines here, but with a hand file little triangular file and kind of break up some of these edges. Not very many places, just a couple of spots here and there. Now we've got to do that to the shield. Especially on the front here. I gotta say the shield on this kit is one of my favorite details, one of my favorite design elements in the Gundam franchise. It just looks so functional and down to earth. bit of null oil and just hit some of those spots that we weathered. Just a bit of some Tamiya weathering stuff. Looks really good for smoke and grime. I'm trying to look at areas where Thrusters will be firing, kind of smoking up the metal under there. Or places where vents would be collecting dirt. And we've also got brown color we can bring in.
gathering technique, which I haven't seen anybody do, but I'm going to try taking a little bit of actual sand and dust and getting that on there. So I don't have any glue on there, so hopefully the actual sand particles shouldn't stick, but the dust will get on there a bit, and that does do something kind of interesting to the surface. A little bit gritty, a lot more matte. Now of course that won't stick on its own, so I'm going to spray it next with a dull coat. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is take a little bit of this tester silver and do some edging and some paint chipping. It's a really brilliant silver with really good coverage and it's very thin. Now, I'm going to start off by doing a little bit in some of these edges and try to get in to the nicks that I put into the surface of the model. I also want to hit some of the other edges. Not everywhere but a bit. I want to make it look like the paint has been scraping off this thing. probably need to do that again after I've sprayed the fixative on, but this will be particularly nice to see in the darker colors. the urge to be completely symmetrical with this. And I'm trying to poke a little bit into some of these holes, like the bare metal is showing through. Oh, that's way too much. sprayed everything with some Tamiya clear matte lacquer. This is the dull coat that knocks down the shine of everything and protects the paint job, locks in all that dust and weathering compound we put on earlier. But since it makes everything no longer shiny, I had to mask off the eye pieces and I'm gonna have to paint back on some of that silver. Now this part was the most frustrating piece of the whole build. Getting these tiny little stickers into place, just way harder than you would think. The first one went on okay. This tiny 
tiny little back one. I had to try about six times to get it into place. It kept falling off the tweezers, getting stuck on my finger or something. And at this point, it just disappeared entirely into the ether. Do you see it? I actually had to go back and watch the footage to figure out where it went. There it is on the back of the V fin! So frustrating. Now we're in the home stretch. Since the dull coat has made everything have a matte finish, we're coming back with some more of that tester silver paint and just painting a few select parts. Getting a little bit of it into the crevices we made with the Dremel tool and just hitting some of the paint chipping in the other spots. Not everything that we painted silver earlier has to have that silver shine on it. In fact, a little bit of variety would be helpful. Just going through here and there and brightening up that silver wherever it feel like it. I'm also taking this point to do a little bit of detailing. There are a few spots on the model like these little circles that look like they could be a different part. The pistons and the inside of some of the joints that I thought could benefit from a little silver detail. Any of these large flat areas of silver color would be kind of pointless to paint before we were doing the dull coat, so we left them for here. So it's probably obvious by now that I didn't have a good plan at the start of this build. But if you're going to try this at home, you can learn from my mistakes. This is the order I'd recommend for the steps. First, paint any individual parts that you want to be a different color than the kit provided. After that, do any panel lining with a marker, like a Gundam marker, followed up by any damaging you're going to do to the edges with a rotary tool or file. And after that, do the washes and splatters. Next, you can do your paint chipping effects with a gray or a silver color followed up by the pigment sponge for any of those nice gradations. After that, dust or dry pigments, chalks, that kind of thing. And then the dull coat sprayed on. And when that's dry, any final silver you want to put on or other metallic colors. And that's how you do it. Thank you for watching. Here's the before. And here's what we ended up with.